Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. For today's episode, let's look at iMovie's export options. So I often get asked, what are the best settings for me to export my video from iMovie? Now there's no one answer for this. It all depends on what you plan on using the video for, what the original quality of the video was, where you end up putting the video, all sorts of different things. So instead of addressing it from that viewpoint, let's just look at all the different options and talk about them. So you can find all your export options under Share in iMovie, and there are a ton of them. The first part of this menu here gives you some very quick options, like sharing directly to iTunes, iDVD, the Media Browser, which is a shared library between programs like iDVD, GarageBand, and other things, and right up to YouTube and right up to Mobile Me Gallery. If we select iTunes, we can see we're given some standard options here. You're going to see these repeated a lot uh, in some of these menus here. Now, I don't actually recommend using most of these options. You see, these are really good shortcuts. If you want to just post up a casual video to YouTube, just something very quick, or maybe something very quick to Mobile Me Gallery, it's not important. Maybe it's just to share with some friends. Uh, then these could be good options, especially if you do this a lot. But otherwise, I really recommend going to Export Movie or Export Using QuickTime below and exporting the movie exactly the way you want it, and then manually uploading it to YouTube or Mobile Me using the regular interface, especially for YouTube. You have a lot more control when you actually log into YouTube and actually go to your channel, go to the upload page, and upload from there. As for going to iDVD, I've heard lots of reports that this quick function of just taking the video directly over to iDVD uh, doesn't quite always work the way you expect. And sometimes it's better to actually export a movie have that finished product there, maybe do several of them, and then gather them together and start an iDVD project in iDVD. So let's get right to the regular export settings. You can choose Export Movie or Export Using QuickTime. Export Movie gives you the basic options like before. So you can choose one of these and you can see what it's good for. These are just suggestions. They're not really settings for uh, the exported video. You can choose where to put it and you can export. Now. If you want to get more hardcore than that, you can use export using QuickTime. This is where you have all of the fine functionality in here. You can choose how to export and you have a whole list of things that you can choose from here. So for instance, the standard would be to export a movie to QuickTime movie. But you could also go and do an export movie to MPEG-4, which is more standardized format, very similar to QuickTime and it will play back in QuickTime just fine. Um, you can also uh, have some shortcuts like movie to iPod, which will Make sure it exports it in a format compatible with video iPods. Same thing here for iPhone. And you have a few other options like to Apple TV. You could even do uh, things like uh, uh, Flash Video if you have Flash installed. Uh, you can even do the AVI for Windows machines. A lot of options here. You can even use sound, only export the audio track to one of three different formats as well. But let's suppose that you're going to go and choose Movie to QuickTime Movie or movie to MPEG-4. Let's choose that one. Now you can click on the Options button and this is where you have super fine control about exactly what you're exporting. Here's one of the formats I use. I use MP4 format uh, in H.264 video. About 800 kilobits a second. If I want something higher quality, maybe I go to 2000. Um, optimized for download. Image size, if it's something for the web, I just do 640-480 or 640-360 if it's uh, widescreen. Um, then I use 30 frames a second. An audio, if it's not music, I go to 64 kilobits mono and uh, export like that. Now, if I was going to save something, say it was uh, some uh, high definition video I'd recorded some of a family vacation and I wanted to make sure it was in best quality, I probably would take this up to the full HD 720 quality right there and I'd make sure that the data rate was nice and high because um, I wasn't worried about disk space and I wasn't worried about uploading. And this is also a good format for if you don't know what you're going to do with the video later. You're going to put it to DVD, you maybe upload it to the web, you just want to have a good source video and then maybe you could take this and use something like MPEG Stream Clip or FFmpeg X to then re-export it at a lower quality. So when I do Mac Most, I export in a pretty high quality. In fact, for Mac Most, I use the Share Export Movie HD format. And then I take that and run it through another program like MPEG Stream Clip to lower it down to a 640 
360 video that then gets uploaded to YouTube because that's all it's gonna be displayed in YouTube and as a podcast as well. So I hope you find this useful even though there's no definitive answer. One of the things you may wanna do if you're starting a project is take a very small clip from the project, maybe only five or 10 seconds, and try exporting in different formats and using them the way you're going to use the final project, either uploading it to a site or burning a DVD. And once you find some settings that you like that you think are best and work for the project, then you can go ahead and do the entire project and export using those same settings. So now I'd like to hear back from you. Leave a comment to this video at macmost.com and tell me what video settings you're using and what the purpose of the video is. In other words, you've decided that you're gonna use these video settings for a DVD that you're making. And it will be interesting to build up a list of different settings people use and why they use them. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.